all you calculatingly cool crispy cucumbers out there in TV land, it's time for another vivacious episode of Math Homework Helpers. Stick around, we'll be right back. Welcome, everyone, to Math Homework Helpers. This is a show where we get to help you with your math homework and give you prizes just for calling in. With us today are two fantastic teachers. From Honeygo Elementary School, we have the Mr. Cook. And from Parkville High School, we have the Miss Hevel. Hevel! Hevel! That's what I said! Oh. Oh. Hey, Holly and Max. Seems like you two are extra excited today. What's going on? Woo! What's going on? Why, Miss Hevel? Ollie and I were just talking about how Punxsutawney Phil didn't see his shadow. Nope. Oh, so you guys are referring to Groundhog's Day, like where every year in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, they check to see if Punxsutawney Phil, a local groundhog, is either scared of his shadow, which means yep. six more weeks of winter, mm -hmm. or that's right. he doesn't see his shadow, which means spring will come early, right? Is that yep, what you're yep. talking about? Yeah, that's right, Mr. Cook. But it means something a little different for us puppets. That's oh, okay. right. Really? What does it mean for you guys? Well, it means that night will now come after day. Mm -hmm. See, wait, we can't wait. It's going to be amazing. What are you guys talking about? Of course, night comes after day. Well, not quite, Mr. Cook. You no? see, for the past year, day has come after night. Mm, that's right. But okay. now we're happy to report that because Puxatani Phil didn't see a shadow, we will be going back to night coming that's after right. day. That's right. Night, then day. Mm -hmm. You guys are something else. Moving on. Yeah, please, let's <laughs> move on. Boys and girls, if this is your first time watching, you should know that we have prizes. Prizes! Prizes! All you have to sure do is call into the show with a math question, and then you will have the chance to win one of four very cool prizes for our math homework helpers puck to pick a prize wall. Mr. Cook, what are the prizes for today? All right, well, we have four of them. And speaking of four, we have a four-colored pen. We have the tangle puzzle. We also have our fidget spinner. And something that really rules is our BCPS TV Homework Helpers Ruler. Check that out. Isn't that pretty Very awesome? Very cool. Mm -hmm. I think so. Very nice. So, oh, you're my shot, Mr. Cook. I'm in yours. So is this better? Yeah, that's better. Is that this, good? No, is this better? That's, that's better. No, that's, that's better. worse. That's perfect. worse. Perfect. Can I just go in the and middle? Is that OK? There you go. All right, perfect. So don't forget, <laughs> boys and girls, that when you call in, mm -hmm. after we help you with your problem, mm -hmm. we get to drop the puck on the puck maker prize wall, and that's whatever right, the puck lands on, you mm -hmm. will win that prize. That's yeah. awesome. Boom. Boom. That's perfect. All right, so you guys ready to start the show? I think so. Let's do this. Let's do it. Hey, Ollie, who's our first caller for today? Ah. Uh, I was thinking maybe we could go to, could we go check out Maria on the streets? You were oh, talking about puppets earlier. Is that okay? Oh, okay. Sure. That sounds good. So Wait we a minute, Maria. Maria. I love Maria. Maria is awesome. I thought you guys were talking to, I wonder if she has anything to say Maria. about folks with tiny Phil. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. She might, I don't know. So, let's do it. you know, we use math in like so many ways, not just in math class. So let's head out to the streets of BCPSC to TV to see uh, who Maria's talking to with now. Oh, nice. Well, that was a cool way to start. Math on the street. Hola, yo soy Maria, and I love math. Here at BCPS, we use math every day, everywhere, and in every office and school. Come with me, I'll show you how. Hola, yo soy Maria, and today I'm in La Cafeteria at Woodlawn High School with Miss Bettina Applewhite. She's a registered dietitian in BCPS. Hi, Maria. Thanks for stopping by. No problem. Miss Bettina, can you tell me how food and nutrition uses math? Sure. We feed hungry students every day, so one thing we do is make estimates based on the stuff that they like to eat. So at Woodlawn High School, we have different options for entrees, vegetables, fruits, and a variety of milks. We want to make sure that each student gets enough of what they want and they can choose without running out and without us making too much. Oh, that makes sense. How do you estimate how much is needed? 
Well, we look at what was sold previously and make a guess what our students like. Today, we're preparing 144 pizzas. 15 pizzas fit on one tray, which means we need 9.6 trays or 10 trays to cook all the pizzas that we need. Nine trays will have 15 pizzas on it, and one tray will have nine pizzas on it. Oh, so how do you cook the pizzas? So we batch cook the pizzas to make sure that they're hot and fresh for each student. And the pizzas go in the oven at 350 degrees, and we cook them for about 12 minutes. And we know the pizzas are ready and safe to eat when the pizza comes out 145 degrees. Oh, wow, that's a lot of math and pizza. Yes. We use math every day when ordering our inventory to make sure that we have enough ingredients to prepare enough food. We use par levels to make sure that we have enough milk every day for each student. We use math at the cash registers when we give change to the students and when they make their purchases. We use math every day to determine how many fruits and vegetables we sell every day and keeping our production records. And math is everywhere in our kitchens. So thanks for stopping by. Wow, tengo hambre. I'm hungry. Now, I'm going to go get some lunch. Thank you. Adios. Adios. Hi, I'm Isabella and this is your Mighty Math Minute. Mighty Math Minute! Today I'm going to show you how to do a grouping strategy. So I'm going to put parentheses here and here by 2 and 3 and that equals 6 and then 6 times 4 equals 24 and then 3 times 4 equals 12 and then 12 times 2 equals 24. And that's the grouping strategy. Street. Hola, yo soy Maria, and I love math. Here at BCPS, we use math every day, everywhere, and in every office and school. Come with me, I'll show you how. Hola, yo soy Maria, and today I'm in La Cafeteria at Woodland High School with Miss Bettina Applewhite. She's a registered dietitian in BCPS. Hi, Maria. Thanks for stopping by. No problem. Miss Bettina, can you tell me how food and nutrition uses math? Sure. We feed hungry students every day. So one thing we do is make estimates on based on the stuff that they like to eat. So at Woodlawn High School, we have different options for entrees, vegetables, fruits, and a variety of milks. We want to make sure that each student gets enough of what they want and they can choose without running out and without us making too much. Oh, that makes sense. How do you estimate how much is needed? Well, we look at what was sold previously and make a guess what our students like. Today, we're preparing 144 pizzas. 15 pizzas fit on one tray, which means we need 9.6 trays or 10 trays to cook all the pizzas that we need. Nine trays will have 15 pizzas on it, and one tray will have nine pizzas on it. Oh, so how do you cook the pizzas? So we batch cook the pizzas to make sure that they're hot and fresh for each student. And the pizzas go in the oven at 350 degrees, and we cook them for about 12 minutes. And we know the pizzas are ready and safe to eat when the pizza comes out 145 degrees. Oh, wow, that's a lot of math and pizza. Yes. 
We use math every day when ordering our inventory to make sure that we have enough ingredients to prepare enough food. We use par levels to make sure that we have enough milk every day for each student. We use math at the cash registers when we give change to the students and when they make their purchases. We use math every day to determine how many fruits and vegetables we sell every day and keeping our production records. And math is everywhere in our kitchens. So thanks for stopping by. Wow, tengo hambre. I'm hungry. Now I'm gonna go get some lunch. Thank you, adios. Adios. Yo soy Maria, and I love math. Here at BCPS, we use math every day, everywhere, and in every office and school. Come with me, I'll show you how. Today, I'm here at Riderwood Elementary with instrumental music teacher, Mr. Muller. How you doing, Maria? I'm great, thanks for asking. Can you tell me how you use math in music class? Yeah, sure. Actually, we use math all the time. One of the biggest ways musicians use math is by counting beats. And we do that so we know when to play our notes and how long to play those notes for. For example, if I wanted to play a whole note, and if this was my beat, a whole note lasts for four beats, it would sound like this. And we call that a note value, that its value is four beats long. But if I want, I could play a shorter note and cut a whole note in half. So if I have a whole note which gets four beats, mm -hmm. and I cut that in half, now all of a sudden I'm just playing a note that gets two beats, and of course we call that a half note. And it sounds half like this. There you go. And we can go even farther. If you want to play even shorter, you could cut a half note in half, and if that's two beats, half of two is just one, and those are called quarter notes, and they just get one beat a note. But here's where it gets interesting in music, because if you want, you could actually play shorter notes. You could cut a quarter note in half and get an eighth note. And the neat thing about eighth notes are they're only a half a beat a piece, so actually it takes two eighth notes to equal one beat. And they sound really fast like this. And you can go even farther. If I wanted, I could take an eighth note and cut it in half, and I'd be left with a sixteenth note. Or I could take a sixteenth note and cut that in half, I'd have a thirty-second note. And if I cut that in half, a sixty-fourth note, and so on and so forth. And if you notice, these are all fractions, right? Yeah. So this is just commonplace in mathematics. Well, it's also commonplace in music. And the best part is, when you put all that together, whole notes and half notes and quarter notes and eighth notes, and you add different pitches, you can play anything you want. Wow, that's so cool. Who knew that you used fractions in music class? There you go. Thank you so much for sharing. Thanks for coming out, Maria. Adios. Adios. Math on the street. Hola, yo soy Maria, and I love math. Here at BCPS, we use math every day, everywhere, and in every office and school. Come with me, I'll show you how. Hola, yo soy Maria, and today I'm here with Patrick McCusker, the principal at Franklin High School. Tell me, how does a principal use math? Well, hello Maria, and thank you for coming to Franklin High School. One way a principal uses math is in determining how many sections of every course to run. Oh, cool. Can you give me an example? Sure. Suppose we only want no more than 28 students in any class. Mm -hmm. And we have 150 students register for U.S. history. Mm -hmm. Well, we'd have to figure out how many sections to run. So we would say, well, maybe we can run six sections. Well, 150 students divided by six sections would give us 25 students in a section. And that works because that's less than 28. But maybe we want to see if we can run just five sections. Well, then we would need to take 150 divided by five. Well, that would mean we'd have 30 students in each section, and that's more than we want. So then we know we need to run six sections of that course. Wow, that's a lot of students and a lot of math. 
So as you can see, math is important in running a high school. It sure is. Thanks for stopping by Franklin, Maria. Come back anytime. Gracias. Adios. All right, we're back. We're back. Are we back? We're back. I we're back. So, yeah. we're did back. we get everything fixed? I think we got things fixed. We All did. right. Boys and girls, sorry, and thank you for your patience. Yes. We had uh, some technical difficulties, Ooh. so we had to run a couple extra little shows there. But you know what? I, I love watching lot. those math on the street and Mighty Math Minute. Those are good stuff too. Yeah, I good love stuff. When Maria comes on the show. Speaking yes. of good stuff, Aya, our first caller. Are you there? Hello. Oh, yeah, I know you've been waiting for a while. Are you still there, honey? She might have fallen asleep. Yeah, I would have, maybe. Hi. Hey, hey Aya. Hey. Aya, thank you so much for waiting. You're so patient. Yep, yep. You're welcome. So what question do you have for us today, kiddo? Um, hold on. I forgot my homework. Let me go get it. No problem. <laughs> you know what? If I had to wait that long, I might have forgotten what I was doing, too. Me he too. waited for us. We will wait for him. Hey, you know what? I got a good joke for you guys. Ooh, Ready? That's a good joke. Tell me. Tell All right, me here me. it is. There's a Spanish magician, and he says, I'm going to make myself disappear on the count of three. So he says, uno, dos, poof. He disappears without a trace. Ah. Uh, 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 get it? Trace is three. Uno, that's dos, good. trace. Here you go. I don't get it. Oh. I don't that, either. Trace, like you draw, he was drawing something? No, not he's drawing something. No, no. He, he was, was trace, like he's tracing like a with chair. his pencil. I got a. Oh. What? What? Huh? Aya, Aya are you there? Hello? Yeah. All right, what's Aya. your problem, kiddo? We're ready. Go for it. Um. Sammy wants to find the area of his rectangles. Write a multiplication equation to help her. Then write the total area. Nice. So what operation is involved with area, Aya? Huh? What operation are we using to find area? Division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. What do you think? It said write a multiplication equation. Okay. Ah, well, there it is. Okay, that tells us. Does Boom. it give us any information about the rectangle? Um, the rectangle... It has on like uh oh. Is there a drawing of a rectangle? So right side it has um a five ft, and then on the bottom it has an eight ft. Oh, eight. You had f a uh, five feet oh, ft feet. ft. I guess that's what that was oh, talking about. Go. All right. And so for area. Aya, uh, are you trying to find the space? In mm -hmm. Are you trying yes. to find the space inside of the rectangle, or are you trying to find the distance around the outside of the of the rectangle? Um, it says right the total area. It is so, so. Hi, Max. How's it going there, Ellie? I haven't seen yeah, you. He got long. tall. Oh you wow! Mean? I mean my Wheaties. <laughs> so. There's a difference between area and perimeter, right, Aya? For perimeter, we have the outside distances around the edge. It's like the, the rim of the rectangle. And then the area tells us the square footage inside of the rectangle. So let's take it one step further. What do we do next? So I was writing the multiplication. Yeah, problem. perfect. Not a bad idea. That's what so I We're going to multiply do. five nice, feet times eight feet. And what is five feet times eight feet? Five times eight equals 40. Perfect. Here you go. And do you know what our unit's going to be? Is it going to stay feet? What was your question again? Is the, are those, our units going to stay feet? Ah. Well, let's see. I guess, really, you only have two feet to stand on. That's true. You only have two, but when we're talking Unless about the snake. square footage inside oh. of the area. Right. I like to think about it as how many squares are going to fit inside of a rectangle. So oh. I know my unit's going to be feet squared. Oh. oh, that makes sense. I think of it as when I multiply feet by feet, that's showing to the two, the setting it to yeah. the second power. And that means that 41 by one squares inside of that rectangle would fit inside. Wow, that's a lot. 
So um, we we may have lost Aya. He's been on the phone for a while. Maybe the minutes yeah. maybe a run up yeah. or something. But um, okay. you know what? Mm -hmm. We're gonna send out a couple prizes to Aya yeah. for being such a uh, a patient third grader. Let's do it, Mr. Cook. You want to drop two pucks? Two pucks. Um, let's see. Or one How about at a time I do, and do it twice. I'm gonna drop one, and then he gets the one next to it. Is that okay? That sounds good. All right. So we're gonna send out the four color pen to Aya and the tangle puzzle. Woo! Tangle puzzle. Oh, nice. Oh, All right. We're Pretty gonna cool. send out two just because he was waiting for so, so long. Said. Thanks, Aya. What's we that? Made through all those math minutes. All those math minutes he held on strong. All right, so Ollie, who's on the phone now, man? Oh, you guys ready for another call? Let's do it. Absolutely. Man. Okay, on the phone now is Amber from Norwood in third grade. Hello. Hi. Hi, how are you, Amber? I have a joke for you. Hey, oh, what's your we joke? Oh, we love jokes. Go for it. Why was the belt arrested? What, say it again? Why was the belt arrested? Why was the belt arrested? Yes. Uh, why? Let's see. I don't know why. Because he held up some pants. Oh. Oh. That was a good one. It was better than some magician joke. I tell you what? that. That's Mr. for sure. Yeah, Sorry, there was just was no right. trace that of humor in that in that one at all. So. There you go. All right, all right, all right. All right, so here we go. What's your question? Is use a distributive property to partition the rectangle and complete the for formula below. Oh, okay, so we have a rectangle, and we need to Beautiful figure rectangle. out a way to use the distributive property. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so what does your rectangle look like? Uh, we have sort of uh, something that looks like an area model, correct, where we have three on this side for a total of yeah. five across the top. Is that correct? Uh -huh. And then four down the bottom. So um, how would we go about solving this? We have... Four times five equals four, four times three plus two. Oh, wow. Oh. So when you break up, well, what are we breaking up here? First of all, we have the four as one of the factors and the five as the other factor. How did five all of a sudden turn into what's inside of these parentheses? Um, because um, the answer is cool, the five and Three plus two equals five. Perfect. Okay, so we are going to take this four, and we're going to distribute its value out to the first one. And that means that we have four times three. And then we're going to add the value of four times two. That's the example. We have a real one. Okay, so let's take that example and apply it to our real one that we have. So we need to... Let's use this as an example, you're saying, right? So let's apply it to our next one. We have some missing numbers that we need to fill in. Is that correct? So we have seven. So I'm going to use that as my example. I'm going to start a new one. Here is my rectangle. What are some ways that we could break up if one of the factors needs to be seven? Um, what I did for mine. I already did it for yesterday. I did one times seven equals seven times three plus four. Okay, so okay. it sounds like we broke it up using three and four. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay, can we think of another factor that we could use besides one that might make it a little bit more challenging? Uh, Any other number, single digit number I think would work out fine. Because we need to get to an answer of, I believe it, that the product is supposed to be 28, if I'm looking correctly. Yes. Okay, so let's think, let's work backwards. How many sevens are we going to use to Four. make 28? Four. Okay, so four has to be our other factor that's going to go on the outside. So anything that needs to be filled in, the other factor needs to be four. So let's break it up. Four times seven is the same as four times, you said three plus four, is that correct? Yeah. Awesome. So let's use what we did in our first example. We took that first factor and distributed it out to how you broke up that second factor. And Ms. Hevel, what, you're in, as, as the middle school teacher, do you usually show how each factor is distributed I do. Like that. I always draw my arrows okay. from one number to the next number. I, I teach my fifth graders to do that same thing, and I'm hoping that what I'm teaching them and teaching my friend Amber 
we'll be using yeah. later on. So that's awesome. So we have four times seven is the same as four times three plus four times four. So Amber, now I need your help. What is four times three? 12. Okay, so let's put 12 right below the four times three. And what are we gonna put below the four times four? Four times three, what? I'm sorry, yeah, the four times four. So when we distribute the four to the four, what is four times four? 20. Close. Did you say 16, I think? 20. 16. Yeah, 16, perfect. I think five times four is 20, but one less four is 16. Oh. So now we have 12 plus 16. This is how I'm gonna, we're gonna stack this up. Two plus six is eight. One plus one is two. And I'm hoping that your final product matches what you see on the screen, does it? Um, I have a question. Please, what's your question? What I did was I did four times seven equals four times three plus four, and okay. there was blank times seven equals four times three plus four times blank. So the other one is missing is your four. You had blank times three, that answer is four, because that's, that's the other factor. And then the other missing one that you were talking about, the second blank, needs to be a four. Why? Because that four gets distributed to the four, and you had the four because you broke up the seven with three plus four. You broke it up! <laughs> Don't do it! You so can four just, times four? So yes, you need the four times four down at the bottom. And the way that we know that that would work out is, Four times seven, which you said was 28, is the same as four times three plus four times four, or 12 plus 16. Boom. 28. 28 is great. And you can show that using your area model that you had just to the left of that distri uh, distributive property. That makes sense, kiddo? Okay. Sort of. Awesome. Mr. Sort of. Cook. Awesome. I have so, never seen it done this way before. It's really it's interesting, awesome. right? It's well, great. this really leads into the distributive property when you're distributing out values of unknowns, right? right? Yeah. So the unknown. you'll see this. Amber, keep track of this information. First of all, you will definitely see it in fifth grade, and obviously you're you'll see it in the middle and high school. So mm -hmm. um, what you're doing now is awesome. Very cool stuff. High level stuff. So I think, you know what time it is, Amber? I know. I think it's time for Mr. Cook to stay in the frame. Move over, Mr. Cook. There we go. Hello. It's a professional show. Right now. Look, look, check this out. I couldn't block this. This was too That's pretty. That's true. It's, it's a masterpiece. Well, it I think she is. deserves a prize for all that. Let's do it. I think so. Time for the Bucks to pick a prize wall. And, ooh, we got the puzzle. Oh, the puzzle. Ooh. That's a cool fidget toy. It is. That'll keep us busy. Nice. Hey, thank you. Thank Bye, you. Amber. You're welcome. Keep up the good work. That is tough for third grade. That My is. goodness. Speaking of busy. You guys ready for another caller? Yeah, Absolutely, bring him on. Who we got there? Well, I'm give you this we, this wait, what's school. that on the board? Is that snow? Oh I my gosh, I did you guys hear, did you hear about this weekend? I don't even remember what it looks like. Wait a minute, did you hear about Friday night? No. That the day They're after calling for snow. Really? Oh. In Pennsylvania. Uh, uh, in Puxitani. Uh, mm, yeah. Okay, you guys ready for another caller? Let's yeah. do it, who we got, Ali? Okay, on the phone, now we have a sixth grader. Oh, oh yeah. Big time, you guys ready for big time? That's why I gave it this to, is to Nathan. Hello, Nathan. Hello. How's Hi, it going, Nathan? Nathan? Good. Hey, Nathan, do you like the snow? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, are you, are you hoping we get some snow days soon? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Me too. Absolutely. And, uh, I just want to say, um, I'm not actually in fifth grade. I'm in fifth grade. Oh, oh fifth grade. Oh, no, what happened? You got demoted? Oh, no. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. No problem. Sorry. That's okay. We tried to get everything right. That's you right. Know. Somebody yeah. will lose their job. It's okay. All right, moving yeah. on. Just kidding. <laughs> so what's your problem for us there, Mr. Fifth Grader? Um, so A equals 80. I never knew that. Easy. Done. Done. Yeah, and that's the oh, yeah. oh, there's more to it. Oh, there's more. B equals 40. B equals 40? B equals yep. 40, all right. The end. Wait, there's more? Oh, yeah. So we have um 3A plus 10B equals something. Oh, boy, this is getting more difficult. Ooh. I liked it when it was just A equals 80. Yeah, I was going to say that. I think we could all easier. agree that that I was know, the right? answer, and we could stick with it. That's okay. We have professionals that's working for us. Yeah, that's true. 
So I guess we had to figure out what that something is, huh? Yeah. All right, so. Maybe it's cookies. Oh, maybe. maybe. I love, I love cookies. cookies. Uh -huh. So what do you think you want to do, Nathan, here? I know um, A is 80 and B is 40. Uh, do three times 80. Perfect. Three. I like to put my substituted numbers in parentheses so well, that that's I can tell idea. they're separate. Plus. That way it doesn't look like 380. Yeah. Yeah. But and there's then, no there's no operation there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what operation goes there in between the three and the eighty? Uh, the multiplication. Perfect. And then if if it if there's no operation, if it stays next to the parentheses, it, it's automatically multiplication, it right? Like that's the default operation. That is true. Mm -hmm. All right. So I've got three times eighty plus. Do I just write ten b again? Uh, no. You do ten to ten parentheses forty. Oh, perfect. There you go. That's it. Nice. And they start to use. Were you about to put the um, the point? I was for going to. That's okay. They will in fifth grade and in part and some fifth graders will do that. Um, we'll put the little point there for the your point there for multiplication. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that looks like something I can solve now, Nathan, doesn't it? Yep. So let's mm -hmm. let's do the multiplication first, because remember our order of operations. Uh, we have to yep. multiply before we add. So mm -hmm. what? So what's three times eighty? Two hundred forty. Perfect. I thought we were supposed to do the 80 plus the 10, because I, I can do that. That's 90, right? You just add them together. But I remember. And then 10 times 40. Oh, he already knows. He already, he already knows. knows. He, he's way ahead of Mr. Cook. Right. Not surprised. <laughs> OK, thanks. <laughs> and then the 10 times 40, what were you saying? Uh, 400. Perfect. Just kidding, Mr. Cook. You know I love you. Oh, and now I've got an addition problem. Mm -hmm. 240 okay. plus 400 is? Is 640. Perfect. That's it. Good job, Nathan. Amazing. Boom. And Got do you want to answer Mr. Cook's question? Why don't we add the 80 plus 10? The 80 to the end because we already multiplied it. So do you remember what our order of operations says we have to do first? Uh, multiply. Multiply before we do what? Uh, multiply before we add. All right. I think that looks good. And yeah. so when your teacher, when you write it down for your homework, you can always show you can substitute that final answer up into your answer now for your algebraic equation. Mm -hmm. 3a plus 10b equals 640. I really want the puzzle toy. Say that again, bud? I really want the puzzle for the surprise. You want the puzzle oh, for the Oh, is that what you're here for? Oh, OK. Yeah, I thought we were right. here to answer some questions, yeah, but that's OK. And the puzzle. All right. He's keeping us on our toes. That's right. So All right. you're hoping for? Okay. You're hoping for which ones there, buddy? Uh, the puzzle. Oh, the puzzle. twisty thing? Yeah. Yeah, that'll be fun. Let's see Let's if we we'll get it. Happens. I don't know. All right. Yeah. Since uh, you're gunning for that, tell me where to drop it, please. Uh, drop it in the middle between the full color pen and the puzzle. Like there? Yeah, that would be right. He can't there see that far, but there it is. And coming closer. Oh, oh got you got it, it man. There you wanted go. it. You got it. Let's coming go. to you. Yeah. You will be the envy of your entire fifth grade class. It is rigged. Yeah. No, nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. The puzzle looks fun. All right, Nathan, take care, buddy. Before, before I leave, can I tell you a joke? Before you leave, what's that? Can I tell you a joke? Can yeah. I tell you a joke before I leave? Yeah, keep Go it ahead, fifth grade. Yes. Keep it PG or keep okay. it G, please. What kind of bagel flies? What's that? What kind of bagel flies? What kind of bagel flies? Ah. What kind of bagel flies? Hmm. What kind of bagel does oh. fly? I don't know what. A plain bagel. A plain bagel. That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome, bud. Love it. Thank hey, man, you so much for calling in. Yeah, right? I'm using that one tomorrow. That is, that is sweet. I love it. These are, these <laughs> I feel are like great that, jokes. that joke had kind of a hole in it, though. Oh, it? there it is. Oh. It's well-rounded, though. Uh, you know, it's well-rounded. Uh, well, anyway. Yeah. Uh, don't worry. You're, you're going to make your dough here. Don't worry. It's fine. <laughs> you Sorry. guys ready for another caller? Let's we would it. definitely yeah. love another caller. Okay, this is no joke. Okay. No, no joke. joke. No caller. Real caller. No joke. Okay, on the phone now, we have Bobby from Arbutus Middle School, an actual sixth grader. Hey, Hello. Bobby! Are you there? Hello? Bobby? Bobby, hello? I think we scared him away with, I, I think we with lost our jokes. Him. Oh, no. Bobby, are you not on the phone? No, I don't. Oh, man. Aww. That's okay. We have another call. You guys ready for another oh, one? Absolutely. Let's do it. Okay, this is Audie 
from Relay Elementary. Oh, Ari's in fifth Audie. grade. Yeah. How's Hello. it going, Audie? Hello. How hey, you Audie. How's it going? Good. How are you? We're good. Hey, how's, how's Mr. Barnett doing down there? Is Mr. Barnett your principal? Yes. Can yeah. you tell? How's tell, he doing? Uh, He's doing all right? I guess so. I guess so. Yeah. Tell Mr. Barnett that Mr. Cook and Mr. Muller said hi. Who's Mr. Muller? Who's Mr. I have Muller? no idea. There's some, some guy I know. I don't know who he is. Ah. Moving on. OK, you guys ready for a problem? Audie, we are ready for your math problem. Go Let's for it. Let's have it. it to okay. us. Use the coordinate plane to, Over a bit. to plot um, negative 3 and 2. OK. So uh, when I tell my students that we're going to be working with coordinate planes, and all of a sudden I see this negative, we are no longer in quadrant one. We try and stay positive on the show. I will say that. I know. Sometimes we just got to go negative. Yep. Anyway, um, Aldi, is the negative three, is that our x or is that our y? That's our x. Perfect. When it's sometimes it's hard to think to remember which one comes first. I always think about which one comes first in the alphabet. That's what I do, too. Yeah? We're right there together. I always think about, like, we're going to go across this line, horizontal line, which is our x. That's going to happen first, followed by our y. We always are walking first before we stand up any further. And we're going to go back to the left. This is our origin. To the left, to the left, to the <laughs> left. Who sings that song? To the right, Let's to keep the it that right. To the right, to the right. <laughs> so if. Shake your foot. Are we done? Okay. Right. Is it OK? This is really okay. hard. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to concentrate. Concentrate, Max. Mr. Cook. You got to solve Jeez. the problem. You're going to mess it up, Max. So here's negative 3 on our x axis. And we need to go up yes. to 2. And we're going to go to the left three places, the left. and then we're going to go up two. Sorry. And our new plotted point's going to be right there. Can you help me out? Which quadrant is negative three, two located in? Quadrant two? That's You're exactly right. Way perfect. to go. And that one's hard because it almost goes counterclockwise, doesn't it, when we're counting from quadrant one yeah. and then quadrant two. And Quadrant two is special because only the x's are negative in quadrant two, and the y's are positive. Now, is that always quadrant two? Always quadrant two, yes. yes. And where's quadrant three? Quadrant three is right below it. And what's why, special about quadrant three? Why does your one look like a five? What are my x and my y values in quadrant three going to be? Okay, is go. that a better, Ali? I apologize. I don't know. Is that better? Much better. Now it's an i. I <laughs> think it's better. All right. All right. So quadrant three is special because both, if it goes left on the x and then down on the y, that means that these are both, both must be negative. Negative x's and negative y. And then for quadrant four, we have a positive x and a negative y. So did we find the right spot, Audie? What? Yeah. OK. There you go. There we go, my friend. Do you know what's next? Oh, I do. What is it? it? Do you know, Audie? What's it time for? Time for the Puck to Pick a Prize. <laughs> Wall. Wall. All right, Aldi. Let's All see right, what happens. Let's see what happens if I drop it there this time. Here we go. Coming over oh, to yeah. the puzzle. We're still going the over puzzle. to the puzzle. Hot ticket puzzle. item this year. I know. It looks so fun. And the flowers are still standing. Yay. Yay. All right. <laughs> Thanks for calling. Very cool. Hey, I got a question about the puzzle. Can you yeah. solve it? Is it like a solving puzzle? Well, yeah. if you solve it, it's I was not trying a to play anymore. with it earlier to figure out how to solve it. Is it just like know. a square? It's called a tangle. You can tangle it and untangle it and do all kinds of fun things huh. and be distracted by it in class. And Whoa! Wait, what? Wait, what? Huh? What? I thought it was supposed oh, to keep you. Anyway. I well, was well, these it guys, these, I these guys will be okay with it. Hmm. Yeah. All right, well. Do we have well, any other callers? What do we got? Yeah, you guys ready for another caller? Let's do it. Oh, hey, do you guys remember Bobby, our sixth grader? We lost him? Yeah, Bobby's back. back. Hey, Bobby, what's Hello? up, man? Hello. Hey, Bobby. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Bobby. How you doing? I'm doing good. Do you yep. have another question for us? Yep. OK, go ahead. Tell us. Sorry about um, when I when, um, I didn't. That's OK. That's all right. I'll okay. just blame it on Mr. Muller. It's OK. Just <laughs> who? What? Yeah. Equivalent ratios. 
Oh, I love equivalent ratios. Those are two, two very big words. It's a good okay. thing you guys are on that side. Let's have a, what is this? I have two of them, multiplying and um, dividing. Okay, so we need to find equivalent ratios for what? what what's our starting ratio? Um, five, five to 20. Hmm. Which way do you like your, to write your ratios, Bobby? Do you want to use the, sem the colon, or do you want to use a fraction, or the word two? What do you usually use in your classroom? I usually use the fraction, but like you said, you can write it three different ways. You five can. to 20, five to 20 like that. Hi, Max. Hey, I, was I haven't <laughs> seen you in a while. Or yeah. five. How are you? I'm good. Oh, We're doing math. Funny. Be quiet. Oh. Focus. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> So we have to find equivalent ratios by multiplying and dividing? Yes. Like one, one that's dividing and one that's multiplying. I'm just, we're going to do the multiplying first. All right, let's do the multiplying first. So what do you want to multiply by? Let's pick an easy number. Uh, we're going to multiply by two. Uh, two works. Two? Let's multiply by two. So when I multiply to find equivalent ratios, do I just multiply one of the numbers or do I have to multiply both of the numbers? I have to multiply both. All right. So which. Let's, let's go with the fraction, because I love writing it as a fraction. When you stick with the fractions, that's what, those, that's what we've always worked with. So let's multiply the top and the bottom by 2. So what am I going to end up with? Um, I'm gonna, going to multiply them to get 40. So if I multiply 5 times 2 on the top, I should get 10. Then on the bottom, I, was just I think you I heard you say friend. on the bottom you get 20 times 2, which is 40. Hey, Max, we're doing yeah. math. Keep it down what? over there. But I didn't say anything. We're getting serious over okay. here. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. So now I think we're to the dividing part? I think so. Okay. So let's go to the dividing part. So I have to start with my 5 over 20 again. Yes, right. Over 20. Okay, so what can I divide both 5 and 20 by to get a nice even number? Do you know? 5. Yeah, perfect. There we go. They nice. both are, have multiples They're both of 5 in there. Great. So if I divide the top by 5, what's 5 divided by 5? Get 1. Perfect. I have a lot of people that like to say 0 there. Oh, good. Ah. But we couldn't fool Bobby, that's for I sure. I know, right? And 2 divided by 5 is? 4. 4. So look, we've got equivalent ratios. 5 over 20 is the same as 10 over 40 and the same as 1 over 4. Perfect. Hey, Bobby, how, did, how does 10 over 40 or 10 to 40 relate to 1 to 4? Oh, I kind of noticed something. 10 over 40 is 4 thing. Uh, multiplied by 10 over 40 divided by... Oh, wow. wow. So if those that? zeros are taken yeah. out. Is that a straight banana? Uh, no, he, he's sort of square. It's okay. Wow. You what can see doing? that the one fourth is shown up there by dividing oh. by 10. You did times two here and then divided by two. That would be the d 10 difference down to one fourth. Perfect. Awesome. So now you have two different ratios that you can write down on your homework. Okay, Bobby? Okay. All right, man. You know what's next? I do. Oh. Drop that hook. Drop that hook. Oh, man, he's even got a Drop chant going. Okay. Hook. Absolutely. Here it comes. Oh, man. Oh, we got the spinner. fidget spinner, man. Fidget spinner. Woo-hoo. Mr. Cook's been playing with that all afternoon. Oh, yeah. I love it. Bobby, thanks for calling. We like, should, hot glue it to your nose and then spin it every time. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> Wait, what? What'd you say, Bobby? Oh. Before I leave, what? I think he's already gone. Oh, oh he left. It was he might have had a joke. Oh, yeah. That would have been awesome. Hey, you guys want a joke? Can today. I tell you a joke? Yeah, let's hear it, Ollie. What do you got? Okay, what do you call a boomerang that doesn't come back? A frisbee? A stick. Oh. Hey, ah! there you go. You get it? You, guys you know, know what? what? If we stick around, I bet you can hear more of those jokes. You know what a boomerang is? What do you call something that's brown and sticky? Hmm. A stick. A stick. There ah! you go. <laughs> a boomerang. Wait. Not bad. Wait, what? Okay, let's focus on math. You guys ready for another caller? Let's do it. Okay, we oh, wait, can I announce this one? Yes, Max, who's on the phone? Jordana from Pinewood Elementary School. Jordana, are you there? Yeah. How's it going? Hello. I'm good. Jordana, who's your teacher over there, Pinewood? Uh, Miss Paquette. Oh, Miss Paquette. The wonderful Miss Paquette. 
Fantastic. You'll have to tell her Math Max says hi. I'm a, I'm a good buddy of hers. <laughs> yep. She'll know. She'll know. <laughs> so anyway, Jordana, what is your question for us today? We're ready. Uh, well, it's a word problem. Oh, word, Ooh, word problem. We'll take it. Mason and Thomas were working on a decimal division problem. Mason states that 3 and 9, 6 divided by 0 and 3 equals 1 and 32. Uh, uh, hundred. Thomas states that the quotient is 13.2. Who is correct? Explain your answer. Okay. So, first of all, what was the first factor? It was 3 and what? What was the first factor? 3 and what? Uh, wait, which one? Go back. Could you just go back and reread that first From the problem top. in the beginning? 3 and 96. 3 and? Uh, 100. I heard 90. 96 hundredths. 3 and 96 hundredths? Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. 96 hundredths. 3 and 96 hundredths. Hey, Max, how are you? Hey, I'm good. We I'm were asked to divide it by 3 tenths, and it, we have a choice of either 1 and 32 hundredths or 13 and 2 tenths. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. What is the difference, first of all, between those two quotients of 1 and 32 hundredths versus 13 and 2 tenths? How do they compare? Um, well, the decimal place in the uh, first one uh -huh. is uh, just the whole number is 1, and Correct. then in the other one, the whole number is 13, just by missing the decimal place. That's perfect. So. In terms of how they compare value-wise, if the decimal has been moved to the left one spot, is that ten, is 13 and 2 tenths 10 times less or 10 times greater than 1 and 32 hundredths? Greater? It's greater, exactly, because this 13 versus that 1 and, thir one and 32 hundredths, 13 and 2 tenths is 10 times greater. So with that said, we need to think about if we were to estimate it. 3 and 96 hundredths, would you agree that that's close to about 4? Yes. OK. And 3 is 3 tenths is close to what? Would that round to 1 tenth or up to uh, 1 whole or a half? What is it closest to? A half. It's Closest to a half. All right, so how many halves can fit in to four? Would you say that it's closer to, does it go in about twice, or does it go closer to 13 times? Uh, twice. OK, well, let's see. The reason that we do that, it might sound weird that they were changing all those numbers, but we're not really changing them. It we're actually just weird. estimating. Nothing is weird around here. Weird is good, though. When we estimate, it gives us an opportunity at the end to figure out whether it's reasonable or not, if our answer seems reasonable. And if, for some reason, this number here was closer to 1, 1 goes into 4 closer to this number here. So I'm leaning, like you said, closer to the 13 and 2 tenths, but I'm not You're sure. You're not leaning at all, Mr. Cook. What are you talking about? I'm standing up straight. You have fantastic. You're absolutely right. We're doing math over here. Oh, sorry. Um, so the reason I said that, it'll make more sense in just a second. You did, we did Go all ahead. of that to, seem, to come up with an idea of reasonability, whether it would make sense or not, whether it is something that can work out evenly. So let's see. Uh, 3 and 96 hundredths, do you use, which method do you use to divide decimals? Do you set it up like this? Yes. OK, so that's using the standard algorithm. And whenever we are dividing by decimals, there's a step necessary in order to start us off. What is it? Do you know? So we usually. Pep talk. Oh, uh, sorry. That's okay. Uh, is the mailman what there? We start off with. Uh, we look at like the first digit and see if we can go into it any time. So uh, three can go to three one. Okay. We'll put the one over the three. You're right, but is there something that needs to happen with our divisor first? Because it's a decimal for dividing by a decimal. Yeah, it doesn't look like a three on the left. It looks like three tenths, right? Right. 
So what do we have to do there? So let's set it up this way. If I set up this as a fraction, and I have 3 tenths as, let me try that again, 3 and 96 hundredths divided by 3 tenths, it's the same if we multiply the top and bottom number by 10. And we had 39 and 6 tenths divided by 3. Ooh. So that means that we can actually multiply this divisor by 10, which in your case talks about moving the decimal point. And this number can be divided, excuse me, multiplied by 10. And even though we're multiplying both of them by 10, our quotient won't change. So now we have 3 and 96 hundredths became 39 and 6 tenths. And now our 3 tenths is now 3. So I'm going to rewrite that, if that's OK, guys. Do you have time cool for me to rewrite that? Is that all right? Yeah. All right. Okay. It's a lot of stuff on there. It is a lot. And that's why dividing with decimals can be so challenging. So because we multiply the divisor and the dividend by 10, or excuse me, multiply them both by 10, now we have a whole number as our divisor. Mm -hmm. And now we can divide it like we always have. And that's what Jordana was trying to do at first. Yeah, absolutely right. Decimal. Now, is there a, a strategy, Ms. Hevel, that you do when you have a decimal in the dividend? I always like to move my decimal straight up first. Absolutely. So then I don't forget about it. Straight up! I bet teachers <laughs> over there at now Pinewood do the same exact yeah, thing. We do it the same way as well. I'm sorry, that's my dog. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> What's your dog's name? Larry. Larry? Do we have any chew toys for Math Homework Helpers chew toys? You know what? We I have so a, much stuff, I, I do not think we have There are toys. some puppets that we, we can send. We will send an orange what? fuzzy oh, chew Cook. toy. I'm sorry. He's orange, he's fuzzy. <laughs> what? Hey, dog. That's oh, I and I bet he squeaks a little bit, too. Anyway, yeah. so let's take the next step. 3 goes into 39. I believe it could probably go into our first digit here. And I believe you said 1 earlier. Yep. Our next step is to multiply. And what's cool about once we learn our, divi our long division is that these steps can be applied for anything from decimals to decimals in our divisor. So divide, multiply, nice. subtract, check. Wait, did you say uh, multiply when we were doing the, when you put the thing down? Because usually we uh, subtract. Oh, you're right. Good catch on that one, my friend. I put the multiplication sign there. I apologize. Sometimes I put the multiplication sign there so I don't forget. What are you cooking up now, Mr. Cook? Uh, I am. I apologize. I'm cooking up something yeah, crazy. I, must, I, I do that often just for extra help. All right. So let's take it one step further. Now we brought down the 9 after we subtracted. How many times does 3 go into 9? Three times. You got it? That check, that C there, comes from making sure that our difference was less than 3. We divided. Now we're back to the multiplication. We multiplied our check as 0 again, less than our divisor. And now it's, you, bring those six. you got it. 3 goes into 6 twice. Mm -hmm. We're left with 0. And, and because, because we, we talked we moved at the decimal point, we already know which person was correct in your word problem. Absolutely. You can see that your estimation was spot on and reasonable that 3 tenths went into 3 and 96 hundredths greater than 10 times because you saw that in the very beginning when we were doing our, our estimating. So I think we're all set. Does that answer your question? Yes. Fantastic. Well that was a lot of work. Yes. That was one problem. Seriously? And that's what these fifth, fifth and sixth graders have to do in, in Baltimore County. So that's awesome. Right. We are ahead Raising of the game. The bar. That's for sure. All right, Jordano, guess what? We're not done with the year. What time is it? I think time it's time for a prize. Four. And so Perfect I don't see radical. Max's name on there to send over to. No. Uh, oh, cool. And oh. Chew Toy Spinner. OK. Spinner. 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 Woohoo. Thanks for calling, Jordana. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to tell Miss Paquette that Math Max says hello. <laughs> OK. All right. All righty, so guys. We have a time for another caller. What do you think, I Allie? think we can squeeze in one oh, more. Let's you guys do it. We can squeeze in one more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Us up? OK, on the phone now is Ethan from Pinewood Elementary. He's in fifth grade. Hey. Another, hey. another Pinewood friend. Hey, Ethan, do you know Jordana? Yes, are you? my class. Oh, very cool. So We're so your... glad you called. Do you yes. have a math problem for us? We are ready for your math problem. 
Okay, so it says the local museum requires two adult chaperones for every 15 students. How many adults would be needed for 90 students? Hey, this is a real world issue here, man. All right. Mm -hmm. So two chaps for... Two chaperones for every 15 students. We want to know how many for 90 students. All right. Yep. All right. So there's a couple different ways to do this. Which way do you want to try, Ethan? So since I know two adults under 15, well, we could put that as a fraction. So two over 15. Okay, perfect. And, and then I tried doing four, but I couldn't do that. So I did six, which goes into 90 perfectly. So would it be six? So six you're saying... Adults? So you're saying 15 times 6 gets me perfectly into 90, right? But whatever I do to that 15, I also have to do to that yes. 2. So what am I going to do to the 2? My answer is not going to be 6. It's going to be 6 times. Oh, so would it be 12? It would. Good job. Whatever we do to the bottom ratio, we have to do to the top. Do to the to top. Keep, keep that ratio the same. Yeah. Uh, Ethan, has your teacher talked to you about setting up a, a, a ratio table as well? Uh, I have a different math teacher than Jordana. Oh, okay. Well, how about the other, your teacher? Does, uh, does your math teacher talk to you about setting up ratios as a, as a ratio table? So it would be 2 colon 15 and then 12 colon 90. Okay. Okay, perfect. And you can see that if you set that all the way up and bring them all the way down and count by twos or count by fifteens. So we have 12 chaperones for those 90 students. That sounds good. Sounds good to me. Yeah. All right. So what do we have to do next, Ethan? You know what it's time for? I time think for the book to pick a prize. You Woo! got that right. Oh. I really want a spinner or Oh, maybe put it on the right okay. side. Put the it on the right side, Ollie. All right, man. Here we go. Over there. They got the puzzle. Oh, there right. go. That's a popular puzzle this evening. Sure is. It's a popular purple puzzle. Popular purple puzzle. Perfectly. Well, kids, uh, that was an amazing show, it but was. it is all the time we have this episode. Uh, mm -hmm. So be sure to tune in next week. And remember, we do re-air each episode, so be sure to watch. You can even watch these episodes online on our YouTube page. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So check it out, and be sure to tell your friends to watch, too. We look forward to seeing everyone again next time. Only, Only here on CCS TV, baby!